Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. That sounds good now. Praise the Lord. All righty, we'll have our regular services saved at 530. We'll be in the book of Isaiah. And Tuesday morning, we'll have our regular prayer service here at 9 o'clock. And uh, Wednesday night, we'll be in the book of First Thessalonians. And we've got a whole lot of people that need to be prayed for this uh, week. Uh, remember me and my family, Donna, she's still having the problems with this crud, whatever it is, going around. And everybody, uh, be much in prayer for poor Perry Holland. He, he was a member here for a long time until he got dementia and he passed away yesterday morning. And uh, the family will be, service will probably be the latter part of the week. They've got families that got to come in from Ohio and re- really lift that family prayer. Remember the Dillon family, Twyla, she's still in the nursing home. And uh, when I met, visited her this week, remember the Tuck family. Remember Buddy Campbell and uh, all of his family. Remember uh, the Cundy family. And remember Roman Brooks, he's got to have a knee replacement. And remember Tina Foley, she has to have uh, lungs, uh, something about her lungs, and uh, really lift her up. Remember Curtis Wade and all of his family. And my friend Billy Calvert, he has cancer. Remember him in your prayer. Remember Becky's mom, aunt and uncle, and I'm too, is it Randy Manning that had the heart attack? Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember Randy Manning, and remember, uh, what's Tony's last name, Bernie? Uh, spelled okay, remember Tony, he had a heart attack, he's in the hospital. And remember uh, the Purdue family, um, and uh, <coughs> remember the Dent family. Sam, he's in a uh, nursing home. He's recuperating. And remember the Smith family. Several of them at the ask for prayer request. Now, does anybody on this side have a request you want to make? Go ahead, Sharon. Well, my mother, okay. Uh, Oh, really? Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Okay. Anybody else on this side? How about on this side? Golden, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Robert Ragland, he gets something... I can't pronounce it. It's in his wrist. Me and my okay. Any anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer? Who's that? Robert Dawson. Yeah. Really? Yeah. God, I've been knowing him sixty years. I'm gonna tell how old I'm in a minute. <laughs> Remember, uh, Macy Brown. Okay. All right. How about us folks in question? Just lift your hand. Let's all stand at camp. <coughs> Go ahead, Josephine, and lead us out this morning. <coughs> thank you, Lord. Well, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for every, t- every opportunity we have to be in thy house. And Lord, for every request that's been turned in, spoken and unspoken. Lord, we pray for you to address your need, meet your need of each and every one. Let the power and the anointing of your sweet Holy Spirit bless every heart and every life and every soul. And Lord, if we overlook somebody this morning, Lord, we just pray for you to reach out and touch them. Lord, we pray for all the lost. We pray for all the sick and shut in. We pray that the hand of Almighty God has had his way in every heart, in every life, in every soul. And all that you do, we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, one of y'all. Oh, Lord God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Well, did anybody have a birthday this past week? Nobody got a year wiser? How about an anniversary? No anniversaries? Anybody have anything this week? <laughs> well, let's stand and invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in this house. Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace right now. And Lord, we pray that your anointed hand will just reach down Bless this music. We commit this service into your hands, Lord Jesus. Every part of this service, Lord, we want to enter thy gate with thanksgiving in our heart, enter thy court with praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray and ask it all. And let all of God's children say, Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Page 541. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is caught up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder Like me, I heard of 
without his groaning of his precious blood's atoning then i repented of my sins and won the victory oh victory in jesus my savior Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Seems that now I almost see all the sainted dead. Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be. All the 
living saints to fly to the jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, Singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, sing it, praise God. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Savior in the skies. Hallelujah. That could happen any time. Glory be to God. <coughs> Three men on a mountain up on Calvary. The man in the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. Well, the man on the left was a sinner. Tied to the cross, he bled. He could have been forgiven, but he mocked the Lord instead. You say you are the Son of God. They nailed you to a tree. Come down, come down and save us. If God your Father be. Three men on a mountain, up on Calvary. The man in the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. Well, the man on the right was a sinner. Sorry for his sins. He begged the Lord's forgiveness. And Jesus said to him, Fear not, fear not this earthly death. Before this day is o'er, you'll be with me in paradise on heaven's golden shore. Three men on the mountain, up on Calvary, the man in the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. Three men on the mountain, up on Calvary. The man in the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. He died for you and me. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. This next sex song is one of my favorites of all time. <coughs> I dreamed of a city called glory, so bright and so fair. When I entered that gate, I cried, holy.
If you have your Bible this morning, turn with me to the book of Colossians, which is book number 51, chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. How many bought your shield? Will you hold it up? 
Praise the Lord. As I was thinking this morning, all during the week, kind of try to get a vision of what heaven's going to look like. Think about that song, all your loved ones waiting on us when we walk through that gate. When the rapture of the church takes place, there'd be multitudes of thousands going into gates. They'll see aborted babies they never laid their eyes on. They'll see babies with, through miscarriages. Whew. Great granddaddies, my God Almighty. Spouses. Whew. Glory, hallelujah. What a reunion. What a reunion. And Paul brings it out to this church right here. In chapter 3 and verse 1 says, if you be risen with Christ, and what this means is we're born again, we're ready to go. The only thing that holds us right that now, now is gravity. One morning we're going to lose gravity. Hallelujah, we're going out here in a blaze of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are Above, where Christ sitteth. And you can imagine now, on the right hand of God. Who saw something like that in this mortal body? <coughs> Who's ever seen something like that before it took place, before he left this world? In the seventh chapter of the book of Acts, there was a young man named Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost and fire. And he was on trial because he said some bad words to the so-called government of that day and time. He said, if you had known Jesus Christ, y'all wouldn't have crucified him. But it pricked him with their heart. It cut into their heart. Who do you think you are coming in here? We all dressed up in our robes telling us this that number. So they started throwing the rocks against his body. And he looked at verse 56, says he looked up. He said, I see heaven open. And I see Jesus at the right hand of the Father. And he says, into thy hands I commit thy spirit. Lay not this charge against thee. And I believe that he never felt a rock in his body. And I believe that old body of clay set down, Sister Faith. I believe the Holy Ghost had done snatched that soul and spirit out of there and said, beat on it all you want to. Glory be to God. When you look up and see something like that in your physical sense, you know you're on your way to glory. Hallelujah. In a moment of time, it was gone. Glory be to God. That's what Paul is referring to here. When we are dead in Christ, then we are alive. Glory. Hallelujah. Second verse 2 says, set your what? Affection. Say it with me. Affection. On the things above. Glory. What you see in this world today, I don't care how beautiful a building they've built. I don't care what kind of skyscrapers they've built. I don't care what kind of step bummers they've built. All of this is nothing. It's nothing to a place called heaven. And John said, I saw a new earth and a new heaven. The former things that passed away. All these elaborate buildings you see. They're talking about buildings self-sufficient, all this, that, and other. It's going to be done away with. Because Ezekiel said there's going to be a cleansing of the land. And what that means, it ain't going to be no type of corruption, no type of any kind of thing that resembles sin going to be left when Christ comes back. He's going to renovate everything. Glory, hallelujah. Then life is going to go on like it's never been known. There's not going to be no devil down here. Hallelujah. He's going to be down, but he's going to be out of sight. He's not going to run in and out and accuse the brethren every day. Make it out like we've done this and we've done that. 
our affections, glory, hallelujah. When we get to glory, mamas and daddies will never be separated. The children will never be separated. The grandchildren won't be separated. You know, God don't even have no grandkids. He don't have no grandkids. We all his children. Because up there, we're going to have a glorified body. I mean, as close and as wonderful as sex is between a man and his wife, that won't even be going on in heaven. It's going to be better than anything we could even imagine, my God, oh my God, oh my God. Hallelujah, to be in his presence. That won't be one teardrop that will ever go across the streets of glory. Nothing will stain that beautiful, elaborate floor of transparent gold, streets of gold. Glory, hallelujah. What do you, what do you think about the, your most wildest imagination, the theater of your mind? Can you imagine what heaven's going to look like? It's just hard to imagine what it's going to be like. When you go around and see people with hospice, 85, 90 years old, Shrinking up. In a moment of time, you, next time we see them, they're going to look like it was the best day of their life here. The best day of your life ever was here. There's no comparison to what it's going to be like. My Lord, there will not be one foul word that will ever be spoken. There will be no hostilities. There won't be no mistreated children. There won't be no lame limbs. There won't be no sickness. There won't be no disease. And while we can't get our mind fixed on something so special, so many people have problems with that cyanetic nerve. I know what it's like when you lay down, you lay your legs up on uh, chairs and this, that, and other, laying it, and roll and tumble just by your scream and cry. Shingles, earaches, toothaches, cancers. All you, all you do, you... Some days you think, Lord, why, I, I, I just seem to get out of here. Well, look what our Lord and Savior had to go through. And all the mental anguish and all the heartaches and all the trials and all the struggle and all the wondering what's going to take place tomorrow, if there be a tomorrow. But in a moment of time, it'll all be gone. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Not only things of the earth. Don't get attached to nothing down here. Your last commandment, which is number 10, do not covet nothing. The only thing I covet is somebody's prayers. Somebody pray for me. Lord, help my brother, help my sister. I've seen enough heartaches and enough trials and stood over enough coffins to last me five lifetimes. I want to see joy. I want to see people happy. You don't even see kids like it used to be. You used to see them run, getting them swings, and they, they better watch that chain break, you're going to break your neck, you crazy thing. Daddy told me that one day, I done got up all about 10 foot high, that chain broke, and whoo, I thought I was dead. I was like, you know, you get your breath knocked out of you, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't let nothing to this earth get you tied to it that you can't get rid of. Glory be to God. Our eyes and our hearts should be fixed on him and the things that's awaiting us. It's going to be a Christmas when we wake up on resurrection morning. It's never going to end. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. For if you are dead, that means the sin nature. The old you, the old Denver died. He's dead. He's buried. But every once in a while, he wants to come rise back up. He wants to get that revenge motive. He wants to do this, that, and other. That's why James said, blessed is a man when he's tempted, but when he overcomes the temptation. I've said this so many times. I wish I could get my hands in that devil's throat. For what he's cost me in my life, the heartaches and trials, it just wring his neck. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I hope when we go out by the rapture of the church, and he's somewhere in the middle of the air, and every one of us gives him a slap on the way out of here. Just knock him around like he's a ball back and forth. Just 
Beat him, beat him, beat him. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And your life is hid with Christ in God. That's where our life needs to be, in Christ. He it, as Stephen was, as he realized and knew, they're going to kill me today. But I'm going to tell them the truth. And by would-be killers, if every one of them had thrown a stone and touched his body, he even prayed for them. Because they are in blindness, darkness, don't understand anything about Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Talk to people all the time. You don't need to go to church to get right with God. What did Jesus say he was coming back for? What did he say he was coming back for? He said, I'm coming back for a church, which is my bride, without what? Spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. I'm not coming for somebody that goes to church when they want to. I'm not coming for somebody that serves God when they want to. I'm coming for a bride that loves me. I'm coming for a people that adores me. I'm coming for a people when they tell me they're going to follow me, follow me. And one day I'm going to take them home with me. Glory, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And look at verse 4. I love this. When Christ, who is our life, really get that now. Who is our life? He is our life. We don't have no life without him when we leave this world. If he's not living in me, I don't have eternal life. How is he living in me? Through the power, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's what lives in me. And sometimes I get so overwhelmed with joy, I go to weeping. And I think, Lord, little old me, for what I used to be, what I used to do. You reached down your hand to me. And you brought me out of that mire clay. You brought me out of that pig pen. You brought me out of that sewer. You brought me out of that vomit. As a dog returns back and said, Son, I'll set your feet on a solid rock. Like the prodigal son went out in the world and he couldn't find his way home. But one morning he woke up and Daddy was praying, Would he, Lord, send my son home. Send my son home. And she, he saw him coming. He left a wealthy man. But he come back with rags, no shoes or nothing. But he said, go get a robe and a ring and a new pair of shoes. My son has come home. Hey, that's a parable. He wasn't coming back to his earthly daddy. He was coming to the heavenly father. Glory, hallelujah. Now we're going to have a party. Go kill the fatty calf. Glory be to God. What's the wake does as soon as we leave from here and walk through the gates of glory, hallelujah, that the wedding table is set. And I'm going to sit at the wedding table. And guess who's going to pull my seat out for me to sit down in? An angel is going to say, yo, yo, your seat is reserved right here, Brother Denver. Sister Virginia, yours is right over here. Sister Carolyn, yours is right over here. All the angels will be escorting us around. Who's sitting at the head of the table? Who has laid out the menu? This is going to be a pretty good meal. It won't last for seven years. <laughs> So you won't have to worry about getting overweight and eating too much. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who is our life shall appear. Then, ye shall, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. We're going to look like him. Body-wise. And the first thing we're going to want to do is fall on our knees. Cry, cry holy. Holy. When John saw an angel in Revelation, he fell at his knees. The angel said, I'm just a fellow worker. Give me your hand. He said, get up. You ain't seen Jesus yet. My Lord God Almighty, look what an angel will make you do. And you ain't seen Jesus. Can you imagine looking at the throne of God? As wide as Peter, Texas, 1,500 miles. Multi millions and millions of angels singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Guess what? We'll join that course. 
Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then you shall also appear with him in glory. I don't know about you, but that makes me think. My God, how beautiful it's going to be. I can't even imagine, Sister Virginia, what it's going to be like. To go back to when I was 20 years old or 21 years old. I don't care, free, no worry in the world, and nothing of that nature. What if it was like that? It never was no sin, no death, no heartaches and trials. Felt good. Now I crawl up in the truck. I used to run, jump up in them. <laughs> Have to roll out of them. <coughs> Get on that ladder, whole thing. Is it me moving or is that ladder? <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mortify, therefore, your members which are on earth. Glory to God. Glory to God. The word there, mortify, means to live and to lock in with Christ. Your life is going to be something so special. Then you think about how we hid in Christ. And Christ is going to lead the charge. Who can come against us? I love Romans 8, 31. Quote it with me. If God be for us, who can be against us? I paraphrase it. If God be for us, who or what can be against us? There's not a demon in hell. There's not a devil in hell. There's nothing in hell that can destroy a child of Almighty God. Glory to hallelujah. When we think about all the things that he wants to do in our life, how good he wants to make our life, how happy he wants us to be, and all these things, and we take it, sometimes we just take it, don't even take for, we take for granted <coughs> the things that we should be doing for him. Now let's go back to Matthew chapter 18. How do we get real close to the Lord? How do we get what we need from the Lord? Oftentimes, I think, Lord, look like I could get more out of it. And he's, he'll direct you to the scripture. In Matthew 18 and 18, if we'll do this, it says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Think about that. What's going on in your life that you need rid of it? So many of us has got sickness, disease. A lot of us has got anxieties. Depression, worrying about all kind of things. But if we abide that on earth, what does he tell us here? Hallelujah. And whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever we bind, God will loose from heaven. And what that means is that I'll give you a sample of heaven. I'll give you a sample of heaven. If you can, if you could just think what heaven's like. When the woman who had an issue of blood for 14 years, she spent all of her money, that do her a bit of good. But when she touched that tassel on that prayer show, he stopped and said, I feel virtue going out of me. Into you. She was instantaneously healed. And the apostle said, how could you know? There's so many, the crowd is so big. But he felt that touch. She loosed her faith and he bound it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Read verse 19 with me. Again, I say unto you that if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. You find you somebody that believes and pray with them. And don't you give up. What's he telling us that? 
If any two of you will agree is touching one thing, it shall be done. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. When Daniel had prayed 21 days, thought, I haven't seen a result of nothing. What did Jesus do? He said, Michael, go tell him everything is all right. When the archangel walked up into his presence, my God, I heard you the first day, but the prince of Persia meant the devil. He hindered your prayers. Glory, hallelujah. But it's going to be all right, Daniel. It's going to be all right. I don't understand it. He said, you just told us what's going to take place in the latter seven years during the tribulation period. He didn't have no idea what he'd written. He couldn't understand what he was telling him. And God sent the angel when he gets ready to call the church home. Jesus is going to say, Gabriel, yes, sir, Father, sound the horn. I'm going to get my children. Whew. Who's going to stop it? Nobody. Hallelujah. All my sorrows is over then. In a moment of time. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, well, I've been serving God Six, six weeks now out of 20 years. Been to church a dozen times, 24 years. I'm doing great, you know. I, I'm a lock in. Ain't no way I'm going to lose that. I got saved when I was 12 years old. I'm, I'm locked in. I might not be in the will of the Lord, but uh, I'm still saved. Yeah, I, I took some paper plates to the picnic last year. Doing great. Glory, hallelujah. Giving God everything he needs. Now let's go over to chapter 25. Who's going to make it? I'm going to show you who's going to get there according to God's word. It ain't me. If I could, I'd take everybody. But I can't. Hallelujah. Verse 21. And the Lord said unto him, Well done. Read it with me. Thou good and what? Faithful servant. Thou hast been what? Faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things and a dive into what? The joy of the Lord. Who is God going to have in control of this earth? When he comes back, he can't use people that's not faithful. If you're not faithful for your job, how long will you be on that job? I had a cousin was a foreman. Every other week, this black guy come to church. I mean, Miss Mondays. He come in one morning and said, "I've been here yesterday." But my granddaddy died. Okay, I, I'd excuse that. Next week he come in. Grandma died. Oh, okay. Must have a big family. Oh, he had a whole bunch of us. Third Monday. Who died this time? My grandma. He said, wait a minute. She died two weeks ago. No, no, it won't. It's on the other side. See, I, I got several different ones. And got himself caught up in that. He said, well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to let you go. He pleaded and begged and cried. I need this job. I need this job. He said, I can't depend on you. Now, take that little analogy over to Christ. What is Jesus saying to somebody who says, I want a part-time job in heaven? What does part-time jobs, what kind of benefits do you get from What if you never paid that into the system? How much, what would you get out of it? I see people all the time complaining about, I don't get but three, four hundred dollars a month. What'd you have put in it? And they'll cuss and go on. I don't know, no. 
But what's he telling us here? And you read on down to this, the last one down there, he had a talent, but he didn't want to use it. He hid it. And God said, I don't need you. So who's going to be his kings? Who's going to be his princesses? Who's going to be with him? The government of the world will be up on his shoulder. Read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. God is going to hand pick everybody. He's going to have a position. You've got a position already planned out in your life. I can't do it my way. They can sing that song all they want to. Elvis Presley sung it. Frank Sinatra sung it. I did it my way. They ain't done nothing their way. By the grace of God, they was what they were. They had good voices. They made millions and millions. That don't impress God. They could give $20 million today. That won't impress God. They were $50 million. The woman gave two pennies. Touched the heart of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thou good and thy faithful servant. A servant is never above the master. What did Jesus say he was? Mark 10, 45. I come to be a servant and seeking to save that which is lost and give what? My life is a ransom for many. What if he decided I'm not going to that cross? None of us don't know what a prayer like this is. Have you ever seen somebody pray a fervent prayer and blood pop out on their head like sweat? No, you never will be. Doctors is trying some kind of super uh, whatever done is. They don't know what that's like. They have no idea what that's like. Because he had to face what he knew. He knew the end as well as beginning. Where was all of his faithful disciples? On Good Friday. What was all of his faithful followers on Good Friday? What does the Bible say? There was four or five women named was mentioned. Why'd they go there? Because they weren't afraid to be hung on the cross beside him. Hallelujah. They was faithful to him. They loved him. His disciples had run and hid. Denied him. Cussed. Done all kind of things. Now, put yourself in this position. What if you was running a multi-million dollar corporation and every week you were telling people, I need you here, I need you here, I need you here. I'm going to show up now, I want to. It won't work. It won't work. Last man I worked for, he said, I don't care if you feel bad, you come in and get you be here. I laid out on Monday. He said, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to just take a whole week off. Whatever you're doing, get all of it you want and come back next week. This is the last straw for you. He's talked that much of me. And I told him what I was doing. And he said, you need to get the victory over it. And I did. I couldn't do it myself. Almighty God did. Then he told me, he said, I want you to go on storm breaks. I said, I can't go on the weekend. He said, why? I said, I got to preach. Get somebody else. I said, no, I, God told me to do it. He said, you might lose your job. I said, let me tell you something, buddy. I said, God comes first in my life now. This is over 30 years ago. And my family is second. And this job is third because there's plenty more jobs out there. My God will supply my needs according to his riches and glory. And since I've been serving Jesus Christ, I haven't, I might have wanted something, but I haven't needed anything because he has always supplied it. And he will supply your needs. Hallelujah. When you're faithful to him, into everything, he'll be faithful to you. Hallelujah. That's why when I lay my head down at night and pray over everybody comes to my mind, don't know difference who it is, I want, to, I want to hear those words. I want to hear these words right here. Enter, in thy, enter into the joy 
of the Lord. I'd hate to wake up in, in a place called hell. Now, how many people are going to hell? I don't know. But let's back up to Matthew chapter 7. Two verses of Scripture. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And your Bible, this will be in red, right? Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter in, ye at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there which shall go in thereat. Verse 14, because straight is the gate, and there is the way which leadeth into life, and few be, few there be that find it. This is God's word. This is not hearsay. Now you can apply it to your life or you can ignore it. I choose not to ignore it. Man asked me one morning if gambling was wrong. I answered the question this way. What did they do for Jesus' robe and sandal, the Roman soldier? They cast lots for him. They gambled for him. And I said, would you gamble for Jesus' robe and sandal? Well, no. He said, bro, he said, preacher, you make it so hard. I said, what do you mean? I don't make it hard. It's the word of God. It ain't my word. He said, you mean tell me, take that highway right there. I got to stay on that yellow line. I said, well, that's a good analogy. Look how wide that little line is compared to the road. If I get off that line, I'm by, the, I'm by the will of God. Glory. The only the faithful is going to make it to heaven. It's, it's, see, a lot of times they'll say, well, the preacher said this, the preacher said that. No, the preacher didn't say, didn't say this and say that. The word of God says this and says that. Now, one more verse of scripture. Everybody says, you don't have to go to heaven. I mean, go to church, go to heaven. Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Anybody can make up their own mind what they want to do about this. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as in the manner of some is, but exalting one another. What does that mean? That means to lift one another up, pray for one another, whatever you need. So much more as you see the day approaching. What day is that? That's the day we've set aside to worship the Lord. Do not forsake the assembling yourself together. Now, if I believe John 3.16, everybody knows that. If I don't believe the whole whole counsel of God, I can't pick and choose what I want to believe. I have to believe what he says. What did the disciples believe? Read the story of every one of them. They were sawed in two. They were drugged through streets. They were burned at stakes. They was crucified up on X crosses, crucified upside down, boiled in oil, stoned to death. For what? Their belief in Christ. Their belief. Now let's close this out. Go to Luke chapter, I mean John chapter 6. Really take these verses of Scripture to heart. Underline them in your Bible where you remember them and keep them so you know. Verse 60, 6 and 60 in St. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Chapter 6 and verse 60. <clears throat> 
Jesus time to get there. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Sixty one. When he, when Jesus knew his disciples, that his disciples Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said to them, Does this offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? How many saw him leave? He went on to the South Sea of Galilee. You'll find this in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Two men stood by in white apparel and said, Why are you standing here gazing up into the heaven? What happened? Jesus is walking out on the seashore. And all of a sudden, he lost gravity. He said, why are you standing up into heaven? Don't you believe he's going to go back to the Father like he said? This should have been, a place should have been crammed, packed. Best known is maybe 547 people might have been there. He said he didn't go nowhere. And they said these words. For in like manner when he left, he is coming back. Glory, hallelujah. For those that know him and love him. Glory, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now drop down to verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? They had walked with him over three years at this point. Seen miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered and said to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. And what did Peter do the same night he was arrested? <coughs> he denied him how many times? But what did Jesus do? He sent Mary when he, she went to the tomb on nothing down there, grave clothes. The angel said, go and tell Peter as Satan desires to sift him like wheat and destroy him. Peter ran to the tomb. He looked, he saw a napkin laying at length of a man. Jesus' face is so mutilated. He put a napkin over it. He laid that napkin off to the side. A dead man couldn't lay a napkin over another one. He come out of that tomb. And said, I got the victory over death, hell, and the grave. Ain't no grave. Hold this body down. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Will you walk away? What's that to walk away from? Eternal life. What's that to go back to? Read that all the way through there from 60 all the way down. A hard thing. The devil will try to make it hard. The devil don't want you to go to heaven. He don't want you to have joy in your life. He wants you to sit and grieve and moan and cry. Worry about, will I have to go to the doctor? Will I have cancer tomorrow? The mental part that people go through day in and day out. As I told Donna this week, it's really good to me. I said, honey, I can't just go and do things I used to do. I got to learn to have help. The only source I can really lean on is him. He is my source. He's my shield. He's my buckler. 
He's my day star. He hovers over me at night. He comforts me when I cry. He holds me when I ache. He loves me unconditionally. What else could I ask for? And he's going to give me, little old me, a brand new man, a brand new body. And I'm going to get to go see my mama and my daddy and countless, countless, countless saints over the years that I've had so much enjoyment to be around. Hallelujah. And I want to walk away from him. I don't want to... I don't feel like I need to go to church. I don't feel like I need to worship him. I don't even like I feel like I need to praise him. Glory, hallelujah. When he gave it all, he gave it all. He gave it all. Speaking it full of glory. But overshadow her right now. Under that mighty anointed hand. Lord, where there's grief and sorrow, there'll be joy and happiness. Where there's conflict, there's going to be a peace. Thank you. 
I pray that you grant you the desires of their hearts. Bless them, Lord. We just thank you for picking me. Holy Spirit, that you say you do not see me.
change in him. Ain't a storm he won't carry you through. Ain't a trial he won't bring you through. Praise the Lord. Oh, he come my seat a little bit. She tell her they come down all the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. 